Do you know that Daphne, my poor little sister, just got kicked out of college? I seriously don't understand. How could they do such a thing? She's just a kid. My sister is a sweet little angel who never deserved to be treated like that. Well, they didn't do it for no reason, you know. How could you say it like that? She was falsely accused of something she didn't do, and the president of that college is responsible for her expulsion. I'm going to sue him for everything he's worth and make him pay for what he did to my sister. When are you going to face the facts? Daphne has always been a troublemaker, and it's no surprise that she got herself kicked out of college. I'm starting to wonder if you're even paying attention. What is wrong with you? How could you say such a horrible thing about your own sister-in-law? That's completely unacceptable. I thought you were better than that, especially since you're a woman and you're older than my sister. It seems like even your parents have given up on Daphne. She's been rebellious for as long as I can remember, and it doesn't look like she's going to change anytime soon. You're just enabling her by being so overprotective of her. She needs to learn to take responsibility for her own actions. Besides, Daphne's grades were terrible, and she skipped most of her classes. She wasn't doing anything to earn her keep at college, so her expulsion is inevitable. Are you serious? That's all you have to say about your own sister-in-law? That she's a troublemaker, her grades are bad, and she deserves to be kicked out of college? You're her sister-in-law? For heaven's sake! You're supposed to be her support system, not her critic. I'm deeply disappointed in you, Eleanor. Just how much longer are you going to let your sister control your life? Sometimes I think you're too busy taking care of Daphne that you're neglecting your own family, including me. When will you start putting your own family first? What? What are you talking about? Daphne is my family. Enough about that. A callous person like you wouldn't understand anyway. Anyways, I'm sure you're already aware that Daphne has dropped out of college and my parents won't take her in, right? Yes, what about it? Well, since my poor sister has no other options, she'll be staying with us from now on. I've already arranged for her belongings to be sent over, so make sure you're home to let the movers in. Also, I expect you to tidy up her room before she arrives. It wouldn't sit well for her to see how messy our house is. Really? Are you being serious? Of course, I'm being dead serious. I know that you're just as excited as I am right now, aren't you? Tomorrow will be the first day that we get to live together under the same roof, the three of us. I can't wait. In fact, I'm literally shaking with excitement right now. Me and my sister will get to spend so much time together reminiscing about the good old days. We'll have so much fun catching up and getting to know each other again. I can't wait to see what the future holds for us. Seriously, I'm literally seething with anger right now. I can't believe that you didn't even think to talk to me about this. You just went ahead and agreed to let your sister move in with us without even considering how I felt about it. And you already mailed her stuff over to our house? Do you even care about me at all? I don't think I can go along with this. Why are you being so dramatic? It's not like we're asking you to move out of the house. Daphne is just going to be staying with us for a few months until she can get her own place. It's not a big deal. We have plenty of room and it's only fair that she gets to stay with family. Save your breath. It's still a strong no for me. Can you please be a little less selfish and think about the needs of others once in a while? I don't know why you're so against Daphne moving in with us. She's family and she needs our help. She's just a little girl and she could be robbed or kidnapped if she's out there all by herself. If that happened, would you be able to take the responsibility? I bet not. Look. I don't appreciate you making a decision like this without even talking to me about it first. I'm your wife, and I'm part of this family too. I deserve to have a say in what happens to us. Moving your sister in with us is a big deal, and it could literally turn our lives upside down. At the very least, 
You could have given me a heads up so that I could have some time to process the information. But no, you completely disregarded my feelings and chose to do things your way. Don't you see? I had to keep you in the dark about Daphne moving in because I knew you would have acted crazy like this. You would have tried to stop me and made my life a living hell. I did what I had to do to protect myself and my family. It's too late to change our minds now. Daphne's belongings have already arrived and I can't just cancel the delivery and have everything sent back. It's impossible. And even if we could, her college dorms won't take her back. She dropped out of college, remember? So what are we supposed to do? Kick her out in the street? I think not. This is a huge life change for us and I need time to process it. How could you be so inconsiderate? You're just going to upend our lives without even thinking about me? There's no time to spare. Daphne needs our help and we can't just abandon her like that. I know you and my sister don't get along so well, but that's no excuse for you to abandon her. She's our sister and we have a responsibility to take care of her, especially when she needs our help the most. I mean, Look at poor little Daphne. She's so tiny and fragile. She couldn't even hurt a fly. She's just like a little bird, all alone in the world. How can you not feel sorry for her? Look, if we let your sister stay with us, the housework will pile up. Who's going to take care of it? I don't think Daphne will. Your mom always complains about her being lazy and not helping around the house. That's one of the reasons why she refused to let Daphne stay with her. And you? You're no better than your sister. You never lift a finger to help me with the housework. After getting home from work, you just lie on the couch, playing games on your phone, and asking me for dinner like a three-year-old. When you're done eating, you go straight up to our room, leaving all the dirty dishes for me to clean. I can't believe that you're nitpicking me now. Are you seriously complaining because I don't do some stupid chores? Do you even realize how hard I have to work every day to bring home the bacon. I'm working so hard that I've lost weight. My back is killing me and my age is catching up to me. You, on the other hand, are younger than me, stronger than me, and you definitely have more energy than me. So why don't you prove yourself to be more useful and do the housework without complaining? Both partners should take on the fair share of domestic chores, but you don't. You use your job as an excuse to slack off on your duties as a husband. I work too, you know, so it's simply not fair that I'm always the one who does the housework. Stop dumping all the menial tasks onto me. Look, just drop it, okay? Don't even think about trying to divert the conversation anymore. Daphne's belongings are literally on their way here. She can't go back to her college dorms and she has nowhere else to go other than our house. When she arrives, you better welcome her with the friendliest manner you can muster. No questions asked. Hey, Eleanor. Did you clean my room? Surely Calvin told you that I'm moving in your house today, right? Or are you just so incompetent that you don't even know how to use a vacuum cleaner? <sighs> Daphne, you again. Yeah, I've just heard from my husband that you're coming to stay with us. To be honest, I'm not very happy about it, especially considering the way you've always been treating me. Oh, how delightful it is to reflect on the good old days. You were just like a little lamb waiting to be slaughtered. I had so much fun the first day my brother introduced you to my family. You were the perfect test subject for my pranks. From putting a dead mouse in your shoes to filling a hamburger with wasabi or replacing hand sanitizer with glue. <laughs> I must admit, Eleanor, pulling pranks on a naive little thing like you is one of my favorite hobbies. Yeah, I'm sure you loved getting a good dressing down from your parents and slinking back to your room with your tail between your legs after playing those idiotic pranks. I bet you cried yourself to sleep that night wishing you had never met me. What? You insolent little witch! How dare you talk to me in that manner! Don't make me tell my brother about this. 
or you'll regret it. Go ahead, tell him. He's my husband, so why should I be scared of him? I see that you're always good at playing the victim card in front of him, aren't you? Oh, brother, my finger got cut. Oh, brother, I broke my nail. Oh, brother, Eleanor bullies me. Yeah, right. You think you can fool Calvin with your crocodile tears, but I see right through you. So stop fooling around and start acting like an adult. Oh, look, the little flat brain lamb finally stands up for herself. What a hero you are. <laughs> You know what you do best? Being my punching bag whenever I get angry. That's what you're good for. Well, it seems like your plans to make me suffer have backfired on you more than once. Guess who tried to destroy their own brother's wedding and got excluded from it? I can't quite remember who that might be though. Their name starts with a D and ends with an E, but I'm drawing a blank. Daphne, you seem like the brightest kid in the room. So do enlighten me with your vast knowledge. Ha ha ha. You think you're so funny, huh? Your joke is just as lame and bland as your personality. And don't even think that I don't know why you were expelled from college. It wasn't just because your grades were bad. You were also expelled for pulling stupid pranks on your professor. You swapped his lunch with stale food, which caused him to have a severe case of diarrhea. You also try to humiliate him in front of the class by spreading glue on his chair or putting a spider in his briefcase. You're a bully and a troublemaker, and you deserve everything that you got. So what? I thought everyone had a good laugh at Tristan's expense. If anyone is to blame, it's him for being so gullible. I'm just a messenger. Besides, I got bad grades because of Tristan. He was too petty and vindictive to let me get away with anything. He reported me to the college president, and he gave me bad scores on purpose. That jerk was determined to get me expelled, and he succeeded. Tristan should consider himself lucky that I'm not still at the stupid college. If I were, he would have suffered more than just a severe case of diarrhea. What were you thinking? What other crimes do you want to commit? When will you stop hurting people? You deserve to be expelled from college. In fact, your college was lucky to get rid of a spoiled brat like you. I suppose Calvin doesn't know about any of this, does he? I bet you would have made up some lame excuses for your expulsion from college, like the teachers hate me, or my friends intentionally swapped my test to make me fail the exams. <laughs> That's so you. I mean, serious talk here. You must be a real superhero to be able to be a rascal 24-7 without getting tired. How do you do it? Do you have a secret power? Are you getting paid for it? It must be so much work. I really sympathize with you. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm not someone to be messed with. If you keep mocking me again like that, you're dead meat. Calvin will hear about this, and he'll make you wish you were never born. I'm not even joking. Got it? Have you forgotten that I'm the owner of the house? I'm saying that you can't move in, and that's final. The owner of the house? Oh dear, you poor thing. You think you're something, don't you? Just because you're related to my family by marriage doesn't mean you're one of us. You're just an outsider, a nobody. When I come to live at your house, I'll be the queen, and you'll be my servant. You'll be lucky if I even let you breathe the same air as me, let alone eat at the same table. You'll be my maid, my errant girl, my doormat. You'll do whatever I say, whenever I say it. And if you ever step out of the line, I'll make you regret it. So, start learning your place, little outsider. For now, I expect my room to be perfectly cleaned when I arrive. Don't make me wait. Get on your lazy ass and get to work because I don't have all day. You think you can just waltz into our house after disrespecting me this much? Well, you're dead wrong. You're not welcome here, and I'm not going to let you set one foot in my house. I don't care if you've mailed all your belongings here. I'm not opening the door for you, so go back to where you came from. Calvin, 
I thought I made it abundantly clear to you that I don't allow your sister to stay in our house. Why did you let her in? Eleanor, you evil witch. How could you do such a thing? You denied my sister entry to our house, even though she had been waiting outside in the bitter cold for almost an hour with all of her belongings piled up at our doorstep. She was shivering and scared and you just turned your back on her? I can't believe that I married a cold-blooded and heartless person like you. So what? I'm not obligated to care about someone who treats me poorly like Daphne does. And besides, I'm your wife and I deserve your respect. I don't see why you're so quick to defend her when you've never done the same for me. No way. Daphne is my sister for crying out loud. We're flesh and blood. Do you have any idea what would happen to her if you left her out there? She could freeze to death or starve. How could you possibly have any peace in your soul knowing that Daphne is out there all by herself without anyone's help? Even the most hardened criminals would have more compassion than you. Now you're starting to be ridiculous. Daphne is 24 years old. She's totally capable of taking care of herself. Besides, she brought this on herself. She's the one who got bad scores and pulled those brainless pranks on her professor, not anyone else. Daphne got herself kicked out of college, and now she has to deal with the consequences. I don't believe a word of that. Daphne was the victim of a malicious frame-up by her professor, Tristan. He's the one who should be expelled, not her. Ugh! Can you please be more reasonable? When will you stop blindly listening to whatever your sister tells you without even checking the facts? I've had enough of your sister's cruelty and your spinelessness. I need you to make a choice. It's either me or your sister. You can only have one person in your life because we will never get along. I'm tired of these meaningless conflicts and endless discussions that lead nowhere. What? Are you seriously asking me to make that difficult decision right now? You know I can't do that, right? Both you and Daphne are important women in my life. I can't choose between you. My life would be incomplete without either of you. I need more time to think about this. I can't make a decision like this on the spot. Just exactly how much time do you need to make up your mind and come up with a decision? How should I know? It'd probably take around 20 years or so. Are you kidding me? Do you think I'm going to let you push me around? I can kick you and your sister out of the house without a second thought. When I say something, I mean it. And I'm not going to go easy on the people who mess with me, even if it's my husband and his sister. Oh, come on, Eleanor. You know I was just joking around with you, right? <laughs> Look, I know that you're going on a business trip soon, right? I promise my sister will only stay in our house until you get back from your trip. Then she'll have enough time to find any place to stay on her own. Don't you think that's fair? You can't say no to this. It's the best deal we can get. Uh, okay, fine. I agree. But make sure she'll be out of my hair as soon as I'm home, because I won't be happy to see her when I get back from my work trip. I assure you that Daphne and her belongings will be gone by the time you return home. Hey, stranger. I have a big announcement to make. From now on, you're officially homeless. How does the word sound for you? <laughs> And what is that supposed to mean? I seriously don't understand what you're trying to say. Seriously? Are you too dumb to even understand the meaning of the word homeless? It means that you get to live on the streets with no roof over your head and no clean water to use. <laughs> I can only imagine how much fun it would be dragging yourself on the streets to beg for money from passersby. Having your clothes stink so bad that could even wake up to dead or sleeping with maggots every night. Oh, <laughs> that would be a beautiful sight to behold. Honestly, I don't even have a clue what you're talking about. Just tell me exactly what is going on. Ugh, I'm amazed that a thick-headed brat like you has managed to survive for so long. <sighs> Alright. 
Let me break this down for your pea-sized brain. I've already sold the house, so you can't go back there anymore. Once you get back home, you'll figure it out. You sold the house? Is this some kind of joke? <laughs> Why would I waste my breath and joke about it? Look, I sold the house on the day you left for your business trip and bought a new one for me and my brother. It is everything I've ever wanted. A pool, a big yard, and an entertainment room. Me and Calvin will be moving there soon, so thanks for giving me the opportunity to live my dream. As for you, I guess you'll just have to enjoy your life on the streets. <laughs> Look, Daphne, I don't think it's a very wise decision to make. Did you think about it carefully enough? What is there to think about? You told me that we will never get along, right? So, I just did you a big favor by selling the house and kicking you out of it. Simple as that. And did Calvin agree to this idea? I haven't told Calvin about it yet because I want to make it as a surprise for my brother. I'm sure he'll be over the moon when he gets to hear this great news. Oh, okay. Have fun living in your new house then. Of course! <laughs> Don't be upset, Eleanor. You were never really one of us anyway. You never belonged in our family. I'm sure you'll find somewhere else to go. Maybe. You can go cry to your mommy and daddy and ask them for help. But don't get your hopes up. I'm not sure anyone would want a loser like you back in their lives. Me and Calvin will be so much happier without you. Glad to hear it. Oh, don't try to act tough. I know that you would literally die of despair and hopelessness right now because you have nowhere else to go. And you're gonna have to start from scratch. But, hey, we could always use an extra pair of hands around the new house. You can stay at our house and do the domestic chores, but we'll be charging you rent, of course. No thanks, I'm good. I'm glad that I don't have to deal with you and my spineless husband any longer. Thanks for disappearing from my life. I don't want to hear from you ever again. Eleanor? There's something seriously wrong and I need your help. Eleanor? I know you're there. Stop trying to ignore me. This is urgent. Can you please pick up the freaking phone or at least answer my texts? I'm running out of patience. Stop joking around with me, Eleanor. What do you want from me? I thought I made it clear that we're done. Why are you still contacting me? I've been getting your calls and texts for the past few hours, and it's starting to get on my nerves. Stop contacting me already. I know, I know, but just hear me out, okay? I got a call from the real estate agency. They said that there has been some unexpected complications with the sale of the old house. Apparently, the sale didn't go through. What was that all about, Eleanor? I seriously don't understand. <sighs> I already knew that something like this would happen. Look, let me get this straight. The house you tried to sell is my house, and it's officially under my name. So I'm asking you, how can you sell a house that's not even yours? What? Are you saying this for real? <laughs> I don't buy it. This house is my brother's house, not yours. Stop hallucinating. You heard me. The house is mine. I paid for it in full, and my name is the only one on the title. That means that in order to sell the property, you need my permission and my signature on all the required paperwork. Neither you nor Calvin have either of those things, so you can't sell the house. Do you seriously think that you can just sell a house because you're one of the people who live in it? That's hilarious! I can't believe clueless people like you still exist. But it can't be true. The house can't be in your name. It should be under Calvin's name because he was the one who bought it, not you. I mean, Calvin is the breadwinner of the family. He earns double, no, triple what you earn and he pays for each and every bill in the household. So, of course, he must be the one who bought the house. 
This is crazy. I need to see the paperwork. I need to see proof that the house is actually in your name. There must be some mistake. Calvin's salary is triple what I earn? <laughs> Did he actually say that to you? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. With his paltry income, he can't even afford to buy himself a meal, let alone a house. Wait, what? His salary can't be that low. There must be some misunderstanding here. Don't lie to me. It isn't funny at all. Well, I don't have the time nor energy to lie to you. Every single word I said is true. So, let me get this straight once and for all. I've been paying off the house loans this whole time, and the house is in my name. Calvin never contributed to the mortgage payments. There's not a chance that you could sell this house. It only happens in your dream world, and this is real life. This is bad. This is really, really bad. I could literally cry right now, and I seriously don't know what to do. <laughs> is that so? And the reason is... The thing is... I used Calvin's credit card to make a deposit on the new house, and he was furious when he found out about that. You what? You used his credit card to pay for the house deposit? Oh my god! Calvin could end up in debt because of that! I tried to explain that the proceeds from selling the old house would be more than enough to cover the cost of the new one, but that only made him angrier. Of course he should be angry! The house was never his to begin with, so how can you or Calvin be able to sell it anyway? This is your well-thought-out plan? You must be kidding me. Well, you're only to blame for being so foolish. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Thanks for giving me a good laugh, though. This is not a laughing matter, you scoundrel. You backstabbed both me and your husband. The real estate agent told me the house had already been sold to someone else. You orchestrated all of this, didn't you? It's true what they said. In fact, I was disappointed that he had chosen to defend you and let you move in, and I had already made plans to sell the house and move out as a result. After all, how could I still live with a gutless man who fails to protect his own wife? Wait, wait. Hold on, Eleanor. I'm having a hard time believing this. So, you're telling me that the house I tried to sell is actually your house? And you even sold it before I could? If that's the case, then how are we going to pay off the credit card bill for the new house's deposit? Calvin and I are both in serious trouble now. Please, Eleanor, you have to help us. And what does that have to do with me? I see no reason to help you. You're the one who tried to screw me over, remember? You attempted to sell the house behind my back so that you could exclude me from my own house. And now, you're crawling back asking for my help. I can't believe that everything would turn out like this. You have to do something to help us, Eleanor. It's all your fault. You didn't warn me in advance that the house was yours, and now I'm in a mess. You need to help me work out a solution to this problem or I'm going to take legal action against you. Are you seriously blaming me now? You tried to take over the house behind my back, attempting to steal my property, and now you're threatening to take legal action against me? With wisdom like that, it's no wonder you couldn't finish college. I'm surprised you were able to graduate from elementary school. <laughs> Eleanor, you're still Calvin's wife and my sister-in-law. We're in over our heads and we don't know what to do. You're our only hope. Please, do something! I'm still your sister-in-law, please. Last time I remember, you called me a stranger and said you didn't want anything to do with me. So why should I even bother to help you with anything? I was Calvin's wife, yes. But that was before he signed the divorce papers and told me he never wanted to see me again. He said he'd be much happier if I disappeared from his life completely and that he didn't need me anymore because he had you. So I don't have any obligation to help you at all. In fact, I never had. What? That idiot actually divorced you? Ugh, he must be out of his mind. What could he possibly be thinking? Calvin and I are in a lot of trouble. He told me he has no savings. 
But now it turns out he earns very little and doesn't even have a house? Eleanor, please, you can't leave us. I didn't know this was coming and I don't know what we're going to do without you. Calvin and I are lost without you. Please don't abandon us. You backstabbed me by trying to sell the house and plotting to kick me out on the street. And now you're reaping what you've sown. It's not my problem that your plan backfired. You deserve everything you get. I'm just here, popcorn in hand, watching the show as your lives crumble around you. It's actually entertaining, I must say. How dare you laugh at our misery? You're supposed to be our family. You're supposed to help us not abandon us. What are Calvin and I supposed to do now? This is all your fault. Well, this is your mess to clean up, not mine. I remember you telling me all about how terrible it is to live on the streets, and now you're about to find out firsthand. Congratulations on your new life! Daphne was furious to learn that the house she had tried to sell wasn't actually Calvin's, but mine. They were forced to move out of it and rent a rundown apartment. Calvin's meager salary was barely enough to cover their living expenses. Not only that, they also had to take care of Daphne's huge student loans and the credit card bill resulting from the house's deposit. After all the years neglecting her studies, Daphne struggled to find a job. Calvin and Daphne argued constantly about money. Eventually, they hatched a plan to rob a bank, but they were caught and sent to jail. After selling the old house, I moved to a new place far away from Daphne and Calvin. I'm ready to start over, leave the past behind, and build a brighter future for myself.